Hi, I'm Mitzi. This is Design Creek DIY, and we're going to turn this regular slab into wood. We used our textured micro cement system. This, these products were designed for first timers, DIYers. They're easier to use. Mixing is easier. You don't need any complicated equipment like diamond grinders for this. For this whole patio here, we used one box of base coat, two boxes of texture coat one color pack, one bottle of stain, and one bottle of sealer. Uh, we spread it out using a magic trowel. We textured it using a normal house broom. We stained it with a deck stain pad, and then we sealed it with a roller. All right, let's get started. As long as your concrete is unsealed and porous, all you need to do to prep is get it clean. So you can use a pressure washer, you can use degreaser and a broom to scrub it around and rinse it off. As long as it's clean and porous, you're good to go. So if you have any spalling, divots, or cracks, uh, you want to take care of that after you pressure wash before you base coat. So right now we're going to just patch that in and let it dry. Okay, so our patches are dry, patio's clean. I'm gonna pre-soak the concrete really good while I mix my base coat so it can start hydrating. What this is gonna do is it's gonna keep the concrete from soaking up all the water out of our material. All right, so plenty of water. That's gonna start soaking in while we mix. For our base coat, we're gonna tint it black. That's going to give our wood look some depth. So if you're using tint, you got to mix the color pack with the water before you put in your uh, base coat. So one box of base coat takes one gallon of water max. You'll probably use a little bit less. So for this, I'm going to start out with about half a gallon. And it um, doesn't need to be exact. We're going to be mixing it to taste based on uh, how it looks. So I've got about half a gallon of water in there. And now... I'm going to put that into the water. Everything is already pre-measured, so it's one pack to one box. And then I'm going to mix that up real good. You definitely need a mixing paddle and a drill. A little battery powered drill is probably not going to be strong enough to mix the, the base coat. So you need a corded drill. I can add in my DIY base coats. We got Jake on the camera. You might hear a couple of bazingas out of him in the background. Yep. <laughs> My friends. I'm not gonna add the whole thing, I'm gonna add half. Mix it up and then slowly add the rest. Um we should be wearing a respirator. Pause that. <laughs> okay, anytime you're mixing dry powder, you wanna wear a mask. I'm gonna add half my box and then give it a good mix. Whoop. Okay. Okay, when you're mixing, you want to scrape the edges in the bottom, make sure there's no chunks before you add any more. All right, all the chunks are off the bottom. So now I can add a little bit more. Okay. 
All right, it's already pretty thick, and I still have some more base coat to mix in. So I'm gonna add a little more water. Now I'm gonna add the rest of my box. And by mixing it this way, it avoids getting dry material stuck to the bottom. That looks pretty thick. I'm gonna add a little bit more water. Just a splash. All right, so now what we need to do is wait five minutes and let all the particles in this mix hydrate fully and then we can adjust the water if we need to add more we can add more but we're going to take a little five minute break so it's been five minutes it's hydrated and you'll notice it's much thicker when you come back so this is what it looks like after the five minute mix break after everything is hydrated that is way too thick so now we can adjust and add more water add water a little bit at a time a little bit of water makes a big difference Now it's much more fluid, but looks like it needs just a little bit more water still. Now, see how it's not really sticking to the paddle and it's dripping off? That looks just about right. Okay, a helpful tip is to have an extra bucket. Fill it all the way up with water so that when you're done mixing, you stick your drill in the bucket of water, spin it, and it comes out clean. And then you can just leave your drill just like that. Okay, I'm getting ready to spread out the base coat. Uh, this tool here is called a magic trowel. It's very useful. This is the best tool to spread this out with. Um, if you don't want to get this, you can also use just a regular trowel, but if you use this, you're gonna have to get down on your hands and knees. This one, you can stand up. So you can get this at designcretediy.com. First thing I'm gonna do is cut in all my vertical edges and around the poles so that when I spread it out with the trowel, it's just easier. Where's my brush? So it's a little cheapy chip brush. And this is so thin that it just kind of goes on like paint. So I'm just gonna go through and get all these verticals. Okay, so I cut in all the verticals around all the poles, and you can see the concrete's already drying up, so I'm going to spray some more water, and then we'll spread it out. Now, the wood grain on this patio is going to go this way, so what I'll be doing is spreading out my base coat wall to wall this way, in the direction of the grain. Okay, so you want to start with a small puddle, Spread it out. If you pour out too much, it'll be hard to work with. A little puddle like that. Grab your magic trowel and spread it very thin. Go all the way up to the wall. If you have a helper, they can be uh, going around the edge, brushing in those edges. If you're doing it solo, you can just come back to that. Just get your top done and then go around your edges.
Okay, now see up against the wall, I kind of pushed up a big chunk there. Um, I want to go ahead and smooth that out before I continue. So the less big chunks you leave behind, the less sanding you have to do in the next step. All right, it's starting to get dry. So spray a little bit of water. Oh, spots dry. Come over here. There we go. All right, see how my mix is starting to get chunky? I'm just gonna add some new stuff out of the bucket to it. The bucket's getting chunky too, so I might add a little bit of water to the bucket and spin it again. When you're spreading your base coat, you don't have to worry too much about it being absolutely perfect because you will get to scrape off any of these little chunks that fly off of your magic trowel. You just want to make sure that you're putting it down uh, evenly, so the same thickness all around. And you want to pay attention to the consistency of your material. If it starts getting hard to trowel out, then it's probably too dry. If uh, you put too much water down on the patio, it's gonna dilute it too much. So you don't want puddles of water. You just want everything to be evenly moistened and it should be easy to trowel out. If you're doing this on a hot day or you're just taking too long to get the material on the floor, it may get thick in the bucket. If that happens, just add a tiny bit of water, give it another mix, and then it should be workable again. So the goal here with the base coat is to just get the patio covered with a nice, even, thin layer. Um, you'll see that there's little um, like chunkies here and there. And that happens, and it's not a big deal because we can just knock those off after it dries. So don't spend too much time trying to make it perfect. You want to get it coated pretty quickly before everything dries up. So you can see in the corner there, it's already drying. Um, this is on a hot summer Texas day. So if you can do this in cooler weather, you'll have more work time. Uh, just keep in mind that if the concrete is dry when you're coating it, it's gonna suck all the moisture out of your texture coat and it'll be very hard to work with. So it's good to have a helper to um, be working right alongside you who can just be spraying everything for you, uh, keeping that concrete moist. That way you never have to put down the magic trowel and you can just coat it real fast. So this is a good project for two people. Now, you can see how I'm trying to lay it out in a pretty straight line. Um, this is because this is the exact same way that I'll be laying it out for the texture coat as well. So this is time to practice. So you get comfortable with the magic trowel on the base coat. And while you're doing this, just try to keep your lines pretty straight. It's already drying up, so just... Keep a spray bottle by you, or you can use the hose if you have like a mist um, setting on your hose. Another tip is to pour out little puddles. Don't pour out half the bucket and try to spread it. You want to spread a little bit at a time. This magic trowel makes it really easy to get an uh, even coat, so it's not going to be thicker in some places. And this is a good opportunity to practice your troweling for the texture coat. So while the base coat direction doesn't really matter, it's a good idea to go ahead and do it in the direction that your wood is gonna go. 
just so that you are practiced at it when you go to do your texture coat. Here's a good job for your helper. So when you get to the edges, you can just push it right over that edge. Um, and your helper can just have a paintbrush and brush it in as you go. If you're doing it solo, you can just, you can go ahead and do this. It's just a little bit harder to brush it in if it's already starting to set up. This whole process couldn't be simpler. You're literally just icing a big cake. And because it gets sanded in between coats, there's not a lot of pressure to make it perfect. In tight areas, a small trowel is real nice. If you don't have a small trowel, you could also use a chip brush to brush in those tight areas. So even on the verticals, make sure you hydrate. It's very important. Now you don't have to coat your verticals. However, I suggest it because when it comes time to stain, it's going to be really hard to keep the stain from going over the edge. So it's a good idea to also do your vertical edges. Um, and if you're not going to, I would at least paint them afterwards because you're probably going to get some paint dripping over the edge. I mean, not paint, uh, stain. Our base coat is dry, now we need to take off the uh, lumps and imperfections. If you have a small patio, you can use something like this, like a four inch razor blade. Um, we'll use a sanding block or rubbing stone. Um, if you're on a big patio, you should get one of these floor scrapers. It'll make it much faster. So I'll just knock the right off. Just like that. So this base coat has only been dry for about an hour, so it's still pretty soft and easy to stone and scrape. If you were to wait till the next day, it's going to be a little bit harder. So every day this uh, will harden more and more. So you want to get on it as soon as it's dry. Blow off all the little bits and pieces you got off so you can have a clean patio. All right, before we start, I'm going to pre soak and let it start hydrating, soaking in. Now it's time to mix our DIY texture. This is exactly the same as mixing the base coat, except for this time we're not going to add the black tint. So we're just going to mix this directly into clear water. I'm going to add half a gallon of clear water to my bucket. Alright, I'm going to speed this part up because it's literally exactly the same as mixing your base coat. Um, the only difference is you're not going to add the tint pack, so it's just the texture coat plus water. We're back from our five minute mix break and I'm checking the consistency and it looks pretty thick. Now it's time to add a little bit of water until we get the right mix. 
we're looking for like a runny pancake batter. Add a little bit of water, give it a mix. See what that looks like. Oh yeah, see how runny that is? That's what you want. Or it falls off the paddle. Okay, so just like we did on the base coat, we're gonna start by hydrating everything and then cutting in along our verticals and around any posts or obstacles with a brush. And that way it'll be real easy to spread everything out. Okay, so what we're doing is I'm spreading it all the way across. I'm doing like sections and lines. Jake is coming right behind me with this broom and he's adding the He's adding the texture. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Well, it turns out that the first half of this wasn't even recording. So, and, uh, and then we had mic issues. So I'll just talk you through it. So the person with the magic trowel, their job is to spread it all the way from one end to the other end in the direction that the grain is going to go. And then you have a texture person who's pulling just a normal house broom. The cheaper, the better. And the person with the broom, the goal is to try to pull all the way from one end to the other without stopping. So if you get to the middle and uh, you mess up or the line looks weird and you want to redo it, just go all the way back to the beginning of that line, like all the way to the wall, and start over and just texture right over it. You'll get the best texture if you can pull it all the way from one end to the other end without stopping. And then the person with the magic trowel, your goal is to just get it spread out quickly and evenly. The broom is also going to help move material and even it out, um, but the more even you get it, Okay, try to texture without walking on it. The texture coat is not as coarse as the base coat. It's a little bit easier to spread. It holds texture better and it has a little bit longer of a work time. Fun for the whole family. So this is the part where people usually start to panic because it doesn't look like wood and it kind of looks like a hot mess. Um, but you just have to trust the process because once you cut it up into the planks and put stain and sealer on it, you'll be amazed. So right now it looks like a hot mess. Just keep going and trust it. Live, by the way. Hmm? So we're live, by the way. <laughs> live action. Get it, get it hydrated and then texture it on. Yeah. Amazing. And the you can spread it and texture it with the with the brush, the chip brush. Yes. So that's very useful for these corners and edges. Very. <laughs> and it's okay if you get a little paint on the dirt. Yes, you can also just hose it down as soon as you're done. Yeah, and it comes right out. It will dissipate. Indubitably. We're back and the texture coat is dry. Now what we need to do is plan out where we're going to put our lines so we can cut it up into planks. So the first thing I'm going to do is measure the width of the patio. Do you have your phone on you? Yeah. Okay, good. Watch. We need a calculator. All right, our plank size is eight inches. Um, eight inches is our plank size. Uh, the patio is 95 inches. Can you divide 95 by eight? Yeah. With your phone? Yeah, I'm trying to get my I think it's like... Can you hurry up and show I'm trying, Jesus. Oh, yeah, that sounds stupid. 95 divided by eight? 
11.8. Okay, so that means there will be almost 12 planks. Um, so we'll go 40 inches from... Oh, we need a pencil or something. And you're just going to hold it off the edge there yeah. and try to line it up with that mark. Uh, I'm not sure it was in there. Hold it tight. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Hold it tighter. Hold it tighter. Yeah, I'm going to pull it. You have to hold it tight. Yeah, hold it tight. A long time. That's not even. Is it on your mark? Yeah. The mark I made? Yeah. Are you sure? It's on there. Okay. Oh. <laughs> That'll work. Okay, is this still on? Okay, so you only have to pop one chalk line so that you know where to start with your boards to do all of your cutting. You can use anything you want as a straight edge. I would suggest getting something that is the width of the planks that you want. So I want an eight inch plank. We like to use these. These are hardy board. Um, these are like house siding boards. They're pretty cheap and they work really well. This is a carbide tip scoring tool. This is available at designcretediy.com. And this is what we use to cut our line. All right, so then you simply just line up your board with your chalk line that you made. And because this texture is only a couple hours old, it's still very soft and it's easy to cut through. If you wait too long, if you wait till the next day, it's gonna be even more difficult. Watch how easy this is. It just cuts right through that texture. Okay. And then down the line. Try to get a close up of this. Once you get the hang of it, you can go pretty fast. So I think we did this whole thing in about 15 minutes. It doesn't take that long. Um, one trick is uh, not to pull your, your cutting tool all the way to the end. So I start at the ends and pull it towards the middle. That way I don't get any weird uh, accidental overcuts. We just finished scoring all of our long lines, and now it's time to break them up into individual boards. Um, I like to use a framing square so that I get a nice 90 degree angle, but I don't have one today, so I'm using a little piece of my uh, hardy plank, and I'm going to eyeball a 90 degree angle. <laughs> so you can place your lines anywhere. Um, I like to have long boards, and I like to stagger my lines so they don't line up with each other. Um, there's real no rules on how you do this part. You just score it just like we did the long lines. If you want to, you can take like a screwdriver or something, and just you can make little nail holes by just uh, gouging it in. This one, we're not doing nail holes though, so I'm just gonna cut some of these lines and then we'll blow it off.
All of our planks are cut, all of our end cuts are done. And so now I'm going to scrape all of the lumps and, you know, chunks off, and then I'm going to lightly sand it, blow it off, and then we'll stain. All right, it's time to mix up our stain, and today we're using mocha. It's best to mix more stain than you need because if you run out halfway, it's going to be really hard to mix the exact same dilution. So mix a little bit more than you're going to need. So I think I'm going to need one gallon. I'm going to go ahead and mix two gallons. So a gallon and a half to two gallons. Yeah. Just to be safe. Be scared. Whatever I don't use on the first coat, I'll use it on the second coat. So, I'm going to put half the bottle in there and see what it looks like. <clears throat> and need a mixing stick. That's a little light. So you want it to be like a dark color. I'm going for a medium. That looks right. Oh yeah. That's good. Should I have a mic on? Nope. All right, so before we start, Jake is going to cut in on all those little verticals under the wall and around the post so that I can do the main part real fast. You really want to try to not get it on the house. Yeah, don't get it on the house. If you do, wipe it up fast. If you drip, uh, you drip some on the concrete like this, don't just leave it like that. You got to brush it out with the grain. There you go. It's a good idea to put your bucket right next to the wall that you're working on so you don't get drips. We are ready for stain, and we have a couple options on how we're going to apply it. Today I'm going to be using this. It is a deck stain pad, and there's a link to these on our website. If you're on a bigger patio, you can use something like this. This is a car wash brush very soft. It holds a lot of stain. Um, this one I would use on a big patio. On a small patio, you also have the option to hand brush it in. This one's great because it threads onto a stick, so you can stand up and do it. So we might use this one a little bit. Mostly going to use that one. Okay. So when you're staining this, um, you just want to go with the grain and you want to pull your color as far as you can without stopping. So you don't want to do a bunch of little choppy marks. You want to do long strokes. So I just dip my pad in here 
Now the color can uh, settle if you leave it too long. So every time I dip it, I'll usually kind of like mix it a little bit too, just to keep the, the pigment uh, dispersed. It's gonna drip when I come out of the bucket. So I'm gonna bring my bucket closer to where I'm working. All right, place it down and push it. Now I'm going to pull it as far as I can until it starts running out of steam. See that? See how it kind of gradually tapers off? All right, here, I'm going to start right here at the end of that board. And I'm going to scrub this in a little bit because we got that line there. There we go. And then lift it off. Now I'll take my bucket down here. And I'll start over there and I'll end right here in the middle. I didn't stop the video, by the way. You didn't stop it? You have to mute this part. Okay. There we go. Smooth. You gotta stay back a little bit. Okay. Start here at the end of the board. Pull it back. I'll stop there at the end of that board. So it's a lot of overlapping. The key to a good look is just to have long um, brush strokes. <laughs> so I'll start there at the end of this board. Now these drips here, I need to brush those in before they become permanent. There we go. There. If you have a helper, your helper can be um, moving the bucket around for you. And helping to brush in little details especially at the edges. If it drips over the edge, it's nice to have a helper to brush it in as it drips.
Fun fact, recent studies show that the human nose can smell up to a trillion different smells. Fun fact, the most common bird in the world isn't a sparrow or a blue jay, it's the red-billed quail, which lives in Africa and has an estimated population of 1.5 billion, which is 4.5 times the U.S. population. Whoa! Bazinga! All right, stain is dry. Now time for the best part is the sealer. So we're gonna use the DIY seal SB. This is the solvent based sealer. It does have a solvent smell. If you are um, sensitive to solvents and chemicals, we also have a water based sealer. There are some differences and we'll make a video on that. This one is gonna pop the color and be very shiny. So I've already cut in along the wall and you can see the color difference. I'm gonna go get my roller and we're gonna roll this out. So this is the DIY seal SB. The best time to seal the patio is in the late afternoon or early morning. You don't want to seal it in direct sunlight. It can cause it to bubble. Um, you'll have to move real fast. So cooler temperatures in the shade is the best time. You also don't want to apply the sealer if it's going to rain. So this cannot get wet. So this patio was just under 200 square feet and me and Jake completed the whole thing start to finish in one day while making a video. So it is doable. Um, it was a very long day and we sealed it right before the sun went down. Um, it does need two coats of sealer. I only got video of the first coat. So make sure you do two coats of sealer and then to maintain your patio, um, you just need to, to clean it, you just spray it off with water and then get it like a soft foam squeegee to push the water off so you don't get water spots. And if you just keep it clean, it'll last for a long time. The sealer though does need to be, have a new coat of sealer applied every two to five years. Um, you'll notice that the, it looks like the color is starting to fade after a while. When that happens, you just put on a new coat of sealer and all the color will come back. So this is very, very easy to maintain.
All right, well, this is the end of the last step. So that's our tutorial. We're gonna have many, many more tutorials coming up. Um, if you have any questions, call us. We will answer the phone, we'll walk you through it. We'll help you decide what to buy. Any questions at all, give us a call. Be sure to join our Facebook group, the Design Creek DIYers Club because everyone will work together to walk you through things. You can post your before pictures, get some color ideas. You can post your process, post your afters for sure. Um, it's a great community resource. If you like this tutorial, or if you think we did a good job, or if you think anybody else would wanna see it, please like and subscribe so that more people can see our channel. Thanks.